Greetings paddlers, Bill Dawes here from supboardguide.com and today I'm going to be talking about how to make your paddleboard go faster. Three ways you can paddle faster. Okay. Now this is not just about racing, I mean obviously it does apply to racing, but there's a whole bunch of reasons you want to paddle faster. You've got a nice touring board, maybe you want to learn how to paddle a bit more against the wind, you want to paddle, keep up with your mates, whatever. Uh, this is generally how you can improve from your basic paddling and get more speed out of your board. Okay? You don't need a race board to make this stuff work. I said it'll work perfectly well on a touring board and as you'll see in all the video clips I'm going to be showing in this video, I'm just going to be on a good all-round recreational touring board. Okay? So let's start by just quickly explaining where we're going to go. Essentially there are three ways you can get more speed out of your board. Firstly, by improving your technique. So we're not actually putting any more energy into the game, we're just getting more out of your stroke. Secondly, you can do more strokes per minute. Or thirdly, you can get more power out of each stroke. So we're gonna unpack all of those three now, and hopefully at the end of it, you're gonna have enough information to get out there and paddle faster. To start with then, let's just explore technique. So here, as I mentioned, we're not talking about putting more energy into the system, we're just trying to make your existing paddling more efficient. This is really important because if you're not starting from a basis of good efficient paddling, it's going to be very hard to get, harder, uh, to get faster. A really common mistake people make is when they try and paddle faster, their technique actually goes out the window and they start paddling really sloppily and messily and a lot of splash and essentially they've thrown a whole lot more energy into the engine but they're only getting a tiny return from it. So we need to start from the basis of actually having a pretty good technique. All right. Now, good technique starts with the catch. We've done another whole video, how to improve your paddling technique, all about getting your catch right. You must get your catch right. Spend some time working on that. Really, really important. And as I said, that other video goes into that in plenty of depth. The next thing is just generally to understand through the power phase, what you want to be doing is keeping your paddle blade in the positive or neutral zones for as long as possible. By which I mean, when I'm paddling, when my paddle goes in and I get my good catch, now, right now, the paddle is at in the positive zone. All the time it's going through like this, it's still in the positive zone, and then it reaches neutral, that's all good. Once the paddle blade starts going through into this area, we're into the negative angles, and the actual output is a whole lot less. Okay, so what we want to do is we want our paddle blade to be in positive or neutral for as long as possible. Now, a really common mistake that people make when they try and get more speed out of their board is they push harder. The, they, they, their technique changes to what we kind of refer to as a push-pull stroke, by which I mean that when they're paddling, they put their paddle in and they push with the top hand and they pull with the bottom hand. And as you can see, both those things, pushing, pulling, they're making that paddle blade go into the negative zone. Okay. It feels good. It feels like I'm getting a lot of power. I'm pushing and I'm pulling. But actually, it's all wrong down here. It's very, very inefficient. The trick is to try and keep that paddle in that positive or neutral zone for as long as possible. Now, if we look at these clips of me paddling on the water, in this first clip, you can see me doing a push-pull. And it's only subtle differences, but now if we go to me paddling, keeping my, focusing on keeping my paddle in the positive or neutral zone for as long as possible, I'm kind of overcooking it here a little bit just to make the point, but you can kind of see the difference. And from a technique wise point of view, this really is 50% more efficient. Okay. So thinking about what your paddle is doing while you're going through the power phase is really important. Next up, Think about your release. An awful lot of people lose a whole bunch of efficiency when they take the paddle out of the water. And they may not think about it because it's kind of the end of the stroke, but actually, if your release isn't good, you're putting the brakes on right there. You are stalling your board at the back of every stroke. Now, essentially, there are two ways to, 
to release your paddle from the water at the end of the power phase. You can either hoik it out to the side, which we generally refer to as a Hawaiian release, but not everyone knows that terminology, so let's just say we're taking it out to the side. Uh, that's a perfectly good technique. Drop that hand, bring the paddle out, and it very naturally kind of goes through into feathering the blade, uh, which a lot of people like. The Hawaiian release works really well if you are uh, a, a twisty type of paddler. The other type of release which works really well is the Tahitian style of release where the paddle blade comes out of the water directly, okay, like that. Um, it doesn't go out to the side at all. Both of these are perfectly valid. There is nothing wrong with either. You look at any race fleet, there will be people doing both techniques. But both techniques rely on that release being clean. What you mustn't do with your release is lift water because like I say, that is just putting the brakes on. It mustn't be a splashy release. And very importantly, it needs, the release needs to be straight into forward motion with the paddle blade. So many people back here, they take the paddle out of the water and it keeps tracking back for a little bit. And that is just losing energy right there. So if you look at this on the water, Okay, now here is a Hawaiian release, and you can see the paddles coming out the side. Here's a Tahitian release, the paddle is going straight. As you can see, there's a lot less body movement in the Tahitian release. Personally, I'm a, I favor the Tahitian release for that very reason. I like the fact that my paddle, my front hand just kind of stays in front of my face the whole time. But like I say, there's nothing wrong with either. Now let's look at a bad release where I'm splashing, I'm lifting water. Okay, you can see how much energy I'm losing right there. And then this is that reverse release where the paddles come out the water and it's still going back. Again, that's just costing me time. Very, very inefficient. So that's technique right there. Uh, get your catch right. Keep the paddle in the power phase as long as possible in the positive or neutral angles and make sure your release is nice and clean and is transitioning straight into the next stroke. Before going any further on trying to get any power, more power out of your paddling, work on those things right there. Okay, so you've got your technique dialed. Now you want to step it up a bit more, put a bit more fuel into the equation, increase your work rate and go faster. So as mentioned at the start, there are two ways of doing this. You can either do more strokes per minute or you can get more power out of each stroke. I mean, in actual fact, in real life, what tends to happen is it's a bit of both. But we'll look at the techniques individually right now and take them apart. So we're going to start with increasing your cadence, doing more strokes per minute. Now, there's two ways of doing this. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Oh, my God, this is lists within lists within lists. But that kind of just underlines the point that a paddle stroke is incredibly complex and there isn't one right way of doing anything. I'm trying to unpack this for you so you can kind of see where the various paths are and you can explore it yourself uh, because I can't say what's gonna work best for you. But yeah, let's look at how we can do more strokes per minute. The two ways of doing this, either we can shorten the stroke itself or we can shorten the time between the strokes. And this is definitely the place to start. Now, some of you may be familiar with the concept of a metronome. You know, if you're a musician or your kids are musicians or whatever, uh, you may have seen the good old fashioned wooden metronome that every musician used to have and you wound it up and it would just sit there and it would go tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. And that gave you a beat that you could play your music to and you could change the speed at which it went tick tock. Uh, now that's how most people paddle. It's a really natural thing to paddle like a metronome. People are out there and they're going power, return, power, return. There is a natural tick tock, tick tock to their paddling. Okay, but that's actually pretty inefficient because that whole talk time, shall we call it, when the paddle is out of the water is achieving nothing. There is nothing coming out of that paddle. It is dead time. So the easiest way to increase your stroke rate is simply not to paddle like a metronome. And instead of going tick, tock, tick, tock, we're gonna speed up that stage where the paddle is out of the water. And now it becomes tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, okay? The, the paddle is still in the water for the same amount of time. We're not changing our actual paddle stroke at all. 
we are just reducing the amount of time the paddle is out of the water. So that's where you should start if you want to explore increasing your cadence. And it's, it's really effective. Uh, and this is where, in particular, if you like the Tahitian style of release, it is super simple. You just punch that hand forward. It's a very quick, easy mo motion, very akin to walking. Your body's really good at doing this. You know, we've had 100,000 years to get good at that. So it's very natural in your paddling to increase that speed and reduce your talk time, for want of a better word. Uh, so that's the first place to start doing more strokes per minute. The other way of increasing your cadence is where we actually start adjusting your stroke itself. And this is a whole different game in terms of technical aspects. You really need to do this with a coach, a really good coach who understands this stuff because it's complex. What we need to do if we're gonna do that is we're looking for the parts of your stroke that are not generating much power and we're gonna shave those out of the stroke and we're looking for the parts that do generate the power and we'll focus on those. So many people, their, the power coming out of their stroke kind of looks like a good big start and then it drops off as the paddle goes through. So if we reduce some of that back part of the stroke and take the paddle out of the water earlier, then we can do more strokes per minute that way. But a lot of people actually get the most power out of their stroke in the middle. So for a paddler like that, we might look at taking a bit off the back and a bit off the front. And indeed, there are some paddlers who get the most of the power towards the back of their stroke. Often, actually, that means they've got a problem with their catch. But still, the general point is, this is really hard stuff to do on your own without a good coach. And good coaches who understand this level of complexity of the paddle stroke are few and far between. You might well not have one in your area. If you don't and you want to get into this side of things, then feel free to contact me at supcoachonline.com. But generally, I would suggest that you're better off if you want to increase your cadence, just simply work on reducing that talk time. Just keep your stroke exactly as it was. Just reduce the time that the paddle is out of the water. Okay, next up, we're gonna talk about the other method, which is increasing the power out of each stroke. The thing about increasing your cadence is that it's, it's not everybody's cup of tea, okay? There's a lot more body movement going on. It kind of feels like more adrenaline, more stuff, uh, and not everybody is that, shall we say, fast twitch uh, athlete. A lot of people, especially older people, rather than increasing their cadence, are better off actually just looking to get more power out of each stroke. Okay, again, just as with our metronome paddling and stuff, nothing else changes. Our stroke itself, the fundamentals of it, say exactly the same. We're just committing a bit more power at various points of the stroke. So, best way to show this is actually on the water. So, check out this footage of me. I'm paddling here, relaxed paddling, on a nice touring board, doing about four miles an hour. Okay, now, here I am, I've increased the power slightly, haven't changed anything else, but I'm now doing about four and a half miles an hour. What are the differences? What can you see? Well, essentially, it's just a little bit more commitment all round. I'm pushing the paddle in a little bit deeper. I am going in a little bit further forward, but as you can see, it's subtle. But I have increased my work rate and I have probably yeah, raised my heart rate by about 10 beats per minute to gain this extra half a mile an hour of speed. Now let's step it up again. Okay, now up to about five miles an hour. And as you can see, definitely here, I am working a bit harder uh, still. I'm still pushing down really hard, uh, but now I'm engaging my core a lot more. I'm engaging my glutes at the back end of the stroke. And, um, but it's still fundamentally looking the same. Okay, so what are our work-ons here? So when you're exploring this, just start by pushing down harder. That's probably as good a one as any. Uh, have a mess around with that. Put more power into the stroke. Engage more sort of upper body to push down. What I'm talking about here is undeniably a compression stroke. If you're more of a twist stroke person, then yeah, work on getting more twist, increasing. Basically, you're just increasing the little movements just to increase the power. Uh, but as you can see, fundamentally, I'm not splashing, I'm not flailing. It still looks smooth, it still looks relaxed. The really important part about paddling 
is that you can't be tense, you can't be locked the whole time. That's just never going to work. You're going to burn out in two minutes if you try like that. Um, in other technique videos in this series, I'm talking about the similarity between a paddle stroke and a punch or a golf swing. Uh, and it's all about focusing that power into the power phase of the stroke. If you look at how I'm paddling here, even at five miles an hour, you'll see that as my hand is coming forward, my fingers are open, my upper body is relaxed. I relax, I relax, I relax, and then I put all the power into that power phase of the stroke. And as soon as it's over, I'm unwinding again, I'm untensing. So it's power on, power off, power on, power off. That's the only way you can keep it going. Otherwise, as I said, you're just gonna be locked rigid, uh, rigor mortis will set in quite quickly, and game over, okay. Uh, but as you can see, it's all just about little increments of pushing, engaging a little bit harder. And so much of it just comes from that one point about the fact that I'm pushing down more uh, and just engaging the muscles a bit more. As I get faster, I'm thinking about my breathing very consciously too, bringing that into the game. Any martial artist knows that breathing is a huge part of making it work well, making a punch or whatever work well. And it's exactly the same in paddling. Experiment to find out how your breathing fits in. So there's a bunch of things going on. Um, the problem with trying to generalize like this is that, as I said, it's different for everybody. And what I'm saying here might not, you know, about the push might not exactly work for you. But hopefully the point you can see from this is that you can get more power out of your stroke without changing anything fundamentally. It still looks like nice, smooth paddling. So there you have it. Three ways to increase your paddling speed. Always, always start with technique first. There is no point trying to throw more fuel into the engine until you've actually got your basic technique really good. Once you've got your technique good, look at increasing your cadence. And again, start that one just simply by reducing that tock time, reducing the time that the paddle is out of the water. And the other way, increasing the power you're putting into your stroke. Primarily it comes from how much power you engage at the catch, the start of the stroke coming down, but just mess around with that stuff, see where it takes you. So I hope you found this useful. As I mentioned, it's a lot easier to improve your technique if you work with a good coach, but hopefully there's enough here in this vid to help you if you haven't got a good coach locally or you like to just go and mess around and find stuff out for yourself. And so there is no guarantee of which of these are going to work for you, other than technique, that always works. But uh, yep, some people naturally are faster cadence paddlers, some people are naturally power paddlers. There's no right or wrong in that. Mess around with it, see what works. So if you've liked this video, please tell your friends about it. Uh, subscribe to our channel. Check out our other technique videos, which fit very well around this to fill out the picture. And uh, do visit our website. We've got some real cool articles there and get out there, paddle faster, and have fun.